May saw positive returns for both growth and defensive assets. Assurances about the economic outlook helped develop market equities, whilst the hope of interest rate decreases this summer helped global bonds. However, there continues to be a divergence on the expected timings of these decreases between the US and Europe. Starting with the economic picture, in the US, economic data released in May helped reduce concerns of some overheating in the economy, and there were signs of a rebalancing in the economic momentum. However, the minutes of the last meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee reinforced fears about the lack of further progress on disinflation, with any hopes of a near-term rate cut now weakening. In the Eurozone, May headline and core inflation increased to 2.6% and 2.9% year-on-year, respectively. Despite the surprise on the upside, slowing inflation over the last few months has allowed the ECB to signal a higher degree of certainty that rates should be cut in June. UK headline inflation decreased in April to 2.3%, but services inflation continues to be higher than hoped at 5.9%, making the possibility of a June rate cut from the Bank of England seem unlikely. Turning to growth assets, after falling at the start of Q2, US equities rebounded with positive returns in May, driven by better than expected first quarter earning results across a number of sectors. The improving economic picture and the possibility of near-term interest rate cuts helped European and also UK equities. After a strong 2023, Japanese stocks were one of the weakest performers in May as the low valuation of the currency weighed on consumer sentiment. As a result, rate hikes appear essential to support the yen, but too much tightening might bring the possibility of reflation risks. After peaking in April, oil prices fell back during the month. However, commodities overall still delivered positive returns as global demand remained solid with ongoing conflicts in both the Middle East and Ukraine. Turning to factor performance, quality and momentum were the best performance over the month. Expectations of falling interest rates also favoured growth sectors, which outperformed value sectors over May. Defensive assets continued to be influenced by divergent monetary policy and uncertainty around the pathway of interest rates, and this reflected in both US and UK 10-year yields over the month. Investment-grade bonds, however, continued to be supported by positive corporate results. So in summary, the timing of interest rate cuts is driving growth and defensive asset sentiment currently. But growth assets, however, are being supported by solid fundamentals. However, for now, the focus is moving away from the US as the market driver in the short term, as there appears to be greater valuation catch-ups in other regions at the moment.